Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Building a Nation with Polonia Vorsova. I thought we'd start today on the page of Christian Priborovsky, who has, would you believe this, actually handed in another transfer request. So he played a load of football for us, and then he reject then he went, Oh, I'd like to stay again now. And then I dropped him for like one match just so we could shuffle the team around, and he's like, sorry, I'm gonna have to leave again. Just, just piss off, mate. You're being a bit of a dick now, aren't you? Now, we've got quite a lot of stuff. We've had a fair few games off camera, which we'll get to in a minute. But also, before that, it's time for Regen Sunday, the first of this save. You'll understand what this is in a minute if you're new to the channel. But if you want to participate in this, head over to the Discord and drop your regens into the Regen channel. I've had to go for the ones just from the past sort of week, 10 days, because I didn't know, I couldn't actually remember when I'd last scrolled back to. We've still got a nice chunk of them for you, though. So let's get into those. The first of which is Pedrinho Sano, who is a fairly solid centre back. Like, he's not amazing, but the fact that he is from Guinea Bissau. That is pretty damn cool. Uh, who's he playing for? Red Bull Leipzig. I think it's Leipzig. Yeah, it is Leipzig. That's pretty good. Uh, I've not seen a player quite that good from that country for as long as I can remember, really. So nicely done. Speaking of obscure, we have Jamie Guzman here, an El Salvadorian defender. But look at that. 19 heading. This guy is quality. 75 caps for El Salvador. Uh, again, a nice obscure country. But the fact that he's playing for Inter and still only three stars in that team. But 19 heading. Oh, well, I'd love for someone like that now. Then we've got Richard Richardson, who's literally here because of that. Dick Dixon. You've got to love a bit of Dick Dixon. And he plays for Fulham. Then we've got Gabby, a very, very young Spanish uh, defensive midfielder. He's fairly solid. But the main reason I'm showing this is because I noticed that you have Regan Booty on your team and you don't need Gabby, you've got the booty man. Next up after that, we've got Dennis uh, Ruivasep, who is an Estonian central midfielder, and that is a pretty cool one. He's a bloody good Estonian player. For an Estonian player, he's pretty damn good. However, the one jumping reach, um, he, he literally cannot get off the ground. Next up, Václav Pilar, a right back who is from the Czech Republic, and he has got, already got one cap for the Czech Republic at the age of 16. This guy's got future legend written all over him. Surprisingly not described as a, a wonder kid yet, uh, but he is bloody excellent. Still very short, though. And finally, this is Regan Hansen, who I assume is from the same save as the Estonian lad, uh, which looks like a Faroe Island save, a centre-back. And he's already 16 tackling. For a Faroese player, that is incredibly good. Um, I assume, you know, he's only 16. He's already got some under-21 caps. This guy will get a full international cap very soon, I'd have to say. So there you go. There's your regens for the week. If you want to participate in Regen Sunday, drop them in the Discord chat. There'll be a link in the description. Now then, we've had some games off camera. Um, a relatively easy run of league games, or so I thought going into it anyway. I've made a tiny little tweak to the tactic, which I think has helped, but I'm not sure. I'm still in that phase, and it's difficult to be trying to sort these things out while trying to win a league title at the same time. So first up, we went away to Junia Skienovica, and we needed to go really and get a victory here. Now, I made a, a couple of changes. Firstly, I turned on tighter marking. I've been experimenting with that as a potential defensive option. And secondly, I massively shoved up our, high, our, our line of engagement because someone said that that was a good way of us preventing the long balls over the top. The problem was, and I knew this was going to probably be an issue, is that when you do that, unless you move the defensive line up with it, which then makes it even worse in that sense, if you're not good at offside traps, you leave way too much space in the middle of the midfield. And that's why we didn't get a lot of possession in this game. We scored with our first shot on target, I think, of the game. And I think it might have been our only one of the first half of Vashnevsky got into a good position, got the, well, the knockdown from their defender to give us a 1-0 lead. So at halftime, I decided to change things around a little bit, turn the uh, defensive line back to normal. And we actually, at one point, we were down to 43% possession. We pulled it back in the second half and had lots more shots. Unfortunately, they did then score with their first shot on target, uh, uh, which is just one of those things, unfortunately. A great hit and into the back of the net for one. All frustrating as all hell. Thankfully, though, we were able to go back in front as Vishnevsky got the ball in, just inside the area or just on the edge and bent one in the far corner. Two more goals for him today. Fantastic. And then in, the, in stoppage time, Jan Peltz was put through and smashed us 3-1 up to give us the victory on the night. Uh, we just look so much better when we don't play with that. I don't know why. It enables us to keep more of the ball and we have way more chances and shots when we we don't play with that high line of engagement, but I felt like the tighter marking made a difference. And never has that been more so than when we went to the next game against Mazur. So I went straight back to standard uh, line of engagement and all that. Kept the tighter marking on though. And we just looked so much stronger defensively. Gave them nothing in this game. One of the issues I've had this season has been we concede the odd goal here and there. And it's frustrating, but we kept a clean sheet this time. Created tons of chances. Vishniewski gave us the lead in the first half after 17 minutes. The ball deflected to him, but he was able to finish it off for his third goal in two matches. And then he added a fourth goal in two matches by making it 2-0 on the night. The ball was dropped down to him and he just wished it into the bottom corner. He was phenomenal. Key passes for days. Absolute star of the show in this game. And Mazur could get absolutely nowhere near 
near us. Two wins on the bounce again to give us a little bit more form back, which was very, very nice. But the other teams were keeping up with us. In fact, I believe in this match day, all three of our main title rivals all won their matches from losing positions. And this was completely reinforced when we went into our cup match against Ursus. And I played a completely, I think almost every single player was rotated out for this match against what is essentially what looked like anyway, their complete first team. And we beat them 2-0 completely comfortably. It was brilliant. They did get an early red card, which I think contributed, but we were still great after that. P uh, Pia no, Napora scored a penalty, uh, which was very, very nice. Piachara then came off the bench late on in the match, uh, was put through, had his shot saved, but put in the rebound for 2-0. Adam Bloomer was also sent off for us. But we were just brilliant, created chances, dominated the match, didn't let them have anything. And most importantly, two consecutive clean sheets. And that was what I really wanted to see. Unfortunately, we got brought crashing back down to earth as we lost um, another away game. We've been a bit poor on the road. And this was the other ones I could take because they were against top sides. This one was just bad uh, against Wisoki. We, we just didn't have what it took in this game. And I think I set us up all wrong. I realized that their 4 4 1 1 is very similar to a 4 4 2. And I probably should have set up with that approach rather than the standard one. And I think that really cost us. They took the lead um, with a wonderful finish um to be honest there's nothing we can really do about this one from Grochowski and then they added another one just seven minutes later when we just didn't hose uh Glowitzki down enough and he was able to make it 2-0 and from then on we threw everything at them in terms of what I could come up with but the team just weren't able to fashion any chances and we lost 2-0 which was not great in all honesty <laughs> And that was then compounded by the fact that we dropped points at home in the next match against uh, Womja. Uh, I think this is possibly... No, not our only home points. We did drop points to Alexandru as well earlier this year. We were the better side on the night, but we just couldn't quite find any kind of breakthrough. What I would say, though, is that that is now four clean, uh, three clean sheets in our last four matches. But the last two, we just seem to have really struggled to score goals. And I don't know why, because Vishniewski was brilliant in the previous two matches, and he just sort of fallen off the radar a little bit. Hopefully, it's just a blip. Thankfully, again, the other rivals in this title race are kind of falling over each other as well, so it's it's not actually costing us too much. We're still in there and we have a good opportunity today to go more clear. Sort of. As the league is now looking like this, we're still only one point clear at the top, but we do now have a game in hand because we're playing on the Sunday for some reason. I don't know why. Thankfully, yesterday, Legia lost 4-1 at home to uh, Womersha. So they've had a couple of good results themselves. Legia, they have a surge, and at one point they got into second place and could have gone above us, but then they just sort of dropped away again the moment that the first team wants their players back. And as you can see, they've slipped back down to fourth place again. And I think that's basically going to cost them this year, and they probably will come fourth, unless the first team goes, you know what, let's have a crack at this. But Ursus, um, they won 6-0 in their previous match, not the one they just played, the one before that. Um, so yeah, they're really meaning business at the moment. But just look at the results from yesterday. They were 4-1 at home to Wamsha. Uh, Soko drew 0-0. And Ursus also drew nil-nil against sides towards the bottom. So none of us are really flying at the moment, in all honesty. Everyone's kind of falling over themselves. Uh, and Vishniewski is now our top scorer with 13 goals, which is very nice to see. But it's kind of a free hit in a way today, because we'll stay top regardless of what happens. But if we were to win, that would then send us four points clear at the top. And the, the gap would just start to be getting a little bit bigger. And we've got a home game against uh, 15th place next. So it, its potential is an opportunity for us to maybe put a little bit of a gap. The problem is Pelican... They play a 4-3-3. We struggled with... Well, we actually beat them earlier this year, but they gave us a really good run for our money before we actually lost a game. And yeah, I'm a bit concerned about how well we're going to do in this one against them, to be perfectly honest. But I guess we've got to give it the best. It is still kind of a free hit, at least. Um, Maybe they won't play that system, but my scout report said they would, and it seems they have been in most other games, so it would suggest they probably will. And they're actually the favourites, despite being 13th in the league. I guess our form... I mean, they've actually been in recent, good recent form. So we've got a couple of problems. Firstly, Pyramid Head is suspended, which is the last thing we bloody need right about now. So... Zemborowski. Uh, yeah, it's going to have to be Zemborowski. Unfortunately, Kasselix picked up an injury too, and he was going to miss six weeks. So he's going to be out for a while yet. As for everyone else, I'm pretty happy with this one. How's the poor done since he's come in? 701. I do wonder if maybe we put in Malik back in, in all honesty. Uh, we'll give us another under 21 player. We could maybe put Pribarovsky back in here. Um just to give us a bit of fresh legs in that area because it just I don't know the last couple of games it's just not working so maybe we should change things up a bit also going to put Kluska on the bench instead so yeah I think that's that's going to be our approach for today so yeah the one change I made um is what was it on Oh, that's right. What I did before, basically, is I pushed that up like that. And the problem is you leave way too much space in the midfield. But if you push that up like that, you leave way too much space in behind. So what I actually ended up doing was just moving straight back to this again. But we are on uh, tighter marking because I think that has just helped us keep track of some of those runs a little bit better. So yeah, look, 4-3-3. Three, three. Now, what I will change when we get into the game is narrow defensive line. And we're going to go more direct passing because there's going to be spaces. And I want to make sure we exploit that. Like, I hate playing against teams that play like this because it's just so difficult. Already getting my excuses ready for when we inevitably lose this game. Oh, but guys, it was a 4-3-3. What do you expect? The fact that it's away from home worries me too, because we've actually not lost a home game this season, which is nice, but our away form has been a little bit iffy. All of our defeats have come there, and that's five of them now, I think. So, hmm. Thank God for the home form, I say. Right, let's have a look at the tactics before we get into the game. So, out of possession, defend much, much narrower, because 
with those four three threes, if you defend too wide, they find way too much space. And we're also going to pass a tiny little bit longer in this one. And I might also turn that off in all honesty, because they're going to have the middle of the park. We probably will have a lot of space out wide. I'm, we're going to have to make these changes now, I feel, though. Right then, lads. Come on. Dig deep. Your last two matches have been poor, and they've not been against the best opponents in the league either. You know, one sure we're right down at the bottom. Uh, and so were Rook. In fact, Rook is still in the relegation zone. So we actually lost away to a club down towards the bottom of the league. So it's not ideal. If we can get an early goal, get to a good start. Maslanka's ball back post. Pichara over the crossbar. What a chance early on. That could have been the moment. Take a lead there. At least we've got something to hang on to. Oh, hello. Won the ball higher up the pitch. Wisniewski. Oh, that's so poor. This is the problem. Because now we're two on two and he's not going to go to his man. Can you maybe go to your man? No, no, you can't. Why? Why would you do that? This is what I mean about these systems. We when we lost the ball, fine. We've got two on two. But why on earth is the second defender not going to the other player? Like... This guy's clearly got him, so why is he creeping into the middle and not going across to mark his man? He's just allowed that to happen. Kowalczyk's at the back post, and we're losing 1-0 to Pelican, as predicted. I'm not going to go to attacking just yet. It's not the end of the world, but good God. You know what? I might actually turn that back on as well. Just stick to what we know, for the most part. It's like in the last two games, just our ability to create has just disappeared, which is so strange when you're playing the same lineup. Uh, they all just seem to stop being able to create chances. We haven't scored in our last two league games, and they were against poor sides. Before that, we were doing brilliantly. Malik. Pichara. Space out wide for Maslanka. Can he dig a cross out? He must be able to hear. Pjelts. Oh, Pjelts with the good strike. Okay. A shot is nice to have. Let's get back in this game level and soon. Pichara. Here we go. Yaziak again. Whips it across. Cleared away. Maslanka. Good look back inside. He's going all the way through. Oh, what a great finish. Pietro Maslanka. That's his first goal from open play. And we are back level here against Pelican. Lovely stuff. He's got a free kick earlier this year. But this is really nice. It reminds me a bit of the one Catholic scored earlier this year. He picks the ball up. There's a lot of space for him. And he just dribbles past the first defender. And with his right foot, bam. He's a left-footed player as well. To bend that one out there. What a moment for Maslanka. Lovely stuff. Right, that's good. Possession's looking much better now. Why is Zabrowski taking the free kicks? Oh, Oh my god, I can't believe that actually went through. I don't know if the original one was offside too. Let's see. No, he wasn't. Or was he? No, he wasn't. Oh my god, Vishniewski. If that one initial shot goes in, that is 2-1 to us. I can't believe that. That was a great chance. The plan seemed to be to catch us on the counter-attack. We've not been brilliant ourselves either, but we've at least been slightly better than we have in recent matches. I kind of feel like if we were to get in front here, it could possibly be the winner. Because I don't see them scoring another goal against us at the moment anyway. But we need to find that second goal. Zembrowski. Is he going to go for goal? He hasn't. Nipurski! Oh, his header has gone just wide of the post. Oh, my God. Oh, well played. Go on, win it. Yes. Look out wide. Lovely stuff. This is actually quite a nice counter-attack. Men, got to get in the box, lads. Come on. You can do it. Pelts. Vishnevsky! Oh, what a save from the goalkeeper. Really good chance on the break there. Here we go again. Maslanka. Maybe we could just get a header from a free kick or something. Punched by the goal. Oh, my God. Please don't let this be a breakaway. I don't want to concede two of these in one match. Go on. Get out to him. Make a tackle. Somebody. You've got to be shitting me. Oh, maslanka has been the best player on the pitch, um, which is why I don't really want to bring him off. But I might bring Zavzhik around for Priborovsky so I can bring Kluska around for Pelts. I might also just go back to focusing play through the middle again. I'm just mm, I'm just not sure at the moment with this with this tactic. We play against it so rarely that it's hard to come up with plans for it, you know? It just seems like our creativity has gone out the window in the last few matches, and I'm not entirely sure why. Yes, we scored a goal today, but we just haven't looked as good. Loads of space out wide. Maybe we should have brought a striker into this match. Maybe we get Felix in. I don't know. Malik. Back post. Clue sky has gone too deep, surely. Oh, what a save from the goalkeeper. Gora. Oh, and what a... Naburski's missed the header as well. We can no longer say we haven't had the chances in this match. It looks like it is going to be a 1-1. That's poor. Gora flicks it down. Malik picks it up. Look out wide. Please. Oh, now use the width. Now use the width. Gora. And it was a save. Nice free kick's offside. Oh, and that's going to do it. It's going to be a one-all draw. I don't know what's changed. The players are the same. The tactic, other than the tight marking, which is a defensive tactic, is the same. And yet we just haven't created anything in like three matches. After looking really good for two uh, for three matches. It's really, really weird. I guess that's just FM sometimes. But there has to be a reason for it. It's just very, very odd, in all honesty. We got the point, though, which is good. And it moves us back to two points clear at the top again, I suppose. Um, but it's just frustrating when you... I don't know, when something just changes, when you've not changed anything. And then it just doesn't work anymore. Interesting, that's for sure. And maybe it is just a form issue. I don't know. Hopefully we'll do a bit better in our next home game and can get some form back. Because my God, really good there. Very good there. Excellent there. And then just crap, crap, crap. Scored one goal in three league games all of a sudden. And I don't know why. It's really odd. Anyway, uh, we're still top of the league by two points, which is fine. Next episode, obviously, we've got this off camera. And then we've also got... Well, uh, we'll do that off camera too because it's a cup. No one cares about that. So we'll come back for uh, Zambrov away and Swit at home. Not exactly easy matches in all honesty. Um, I know we've beaten Zambrov this season, but it's an away match. And 
yeah, that's three matches without a win now. We really need to rectify this. And I don't really know what to do because, yeah, it's just one of those things. It's really easy to change things when you can, when you've made changes and then you start losing. It's like, well, we'll just revert those changes. But when you're not doing that and then it happens anyway, it's odd. Gotta say. Hopefully we can start turning things around though and get some form back. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode in spite of that, then drop a like on the video. That'd be awesome. And if you're new to the channel, then subscribe. That'd be fantastic as well. And I will join you guys in the next episode. See you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.